The new European guidelines on valvular heart disease provide many uh, important recommendations uh, for the interventional cardiology community and for those are, who are particularly expertise in the practice of percutaneous valve intervention. The first and, and perhaps the most important recommendation is the continued endorsement of the practice of the heart team and the fact that these heart teams should be operating in designated heart valve centres of excellence where there is the appropriate collection of specialists in interventional cardiology, cardiac surgery and particularly valve surgery, imaging specialists and the appropriate related disciplines to achieve the best results in every patient. In addition, we've had very important recommendations taking uh, heedance of the new international uh, randomised control trials, demonstrating the effectiveness of transcatheter valve intervention in intermediate risk patients and a recognition in 2017 that the heart team is now at a sufficient state of maturity to be making decisions on the best treatment option for individual patients based upon the summation of clinical and anatomical factors. We also have important recommendations with regard to the long-term follow-up of these patients as well which is going to be shared by referring cardiologists uh, by the interventional cardiologists themselves and their imaging and their clinical cardiological colleagues with mandated follow-up at three months to ensure adequate imaging of the valve at follow-up and annual follow-up thereafter to ensure the integrity of the valve and the long-term durability. TAVI is now a mature technology. It's uh, deliverable and it's efficacious in a wide variety of patients and it threatens to become the dominant treatment for aortic stenosis in the very, very near future. So that is an important message to general clinical cardiologists that aortic stenosis is rapidly moving towards a percutaneous treatment pathway. And in that context, we now need to consider who is the appropriate gatekeeper for the initial assessment of the patient. And I think we now need to be working out within our heart centres, our heart valve centres of excellence, pathways which ensure that patients are referred for appropriate assessment by the heart team. Whereas historically patients of a certain age would always be automatically referred to the cardiac surgeon, with the exception being referred for consideration of TAVI, I think we're now at a tipping point where the pathways need to change and the primary referral point needs to be the cardiologist who will then assess the patient and discuss the patient within the heart team setting to determine the appropriate treatment option. I think we've learnt in the randomised controlled trials and in the very large international registries that TAVI is now a very safe and a very effective treatment option with a very low risk of complications and very good immediate and medium term outcomes. And what we now need to do is to be working out how we uh, deliver uh, large volumes of uh, TAVI to large numbers of patients and also how we address um, inequalities in the provision of the, uh, of the treatment, whether that be on a geographical basis within individual countries or between different countries across Europe, uh, within different states in America, and also thinking of course about large populations in the world, in Asia for example, or India or, or Africa, where at the moment TAVI has a very, very poor penetration. In terms of emerging evidence, we also need to look to new patient populations who potentially will benefit from TAVI as the new uh, randomised control trials emerge. And thinking specifically about low-risk younger patients, including those with bicuspid aortic valves, thinking about patients who have significant aortic stenosis but have not yet developed symptoms, in whom the development of symptoms is inevitable within a year or two, and also about the important small category of patients who have moderate aortic stenosis and left ventricular impairment, where relief of left ventricular afterload by means of TAVI implantation will have a potentially major impact on the syndrome of heart failure. These trials are all underway and the community is very excited to hear the results in forthcoming years. 
But there is a challenge, there is an impending challenge because the number of patients who will be eligible for TAVI is set to double, triple or even quadruple within the next five years. And that's going to place pressures on current programmes which are already in many centres at saturation point. So we need to be imaginative in the use of our facilities. There will be different solutions in different hospitals according to the local logistics, the availability of personnel. But there is also a major training requirement for the next generation of interventional cardiologists to understand the indications for the procedure, to receive the training in the necessary workup of patients, the sophisticated detailed imaging which is required, in addition to the uh, delivery of the procedures themselves. And this isn't necessarily going to be an activity for interventional cardiologists alone. And I think the surgical community needs to see the writing on the wall they need to recognise that TAVI is here to stay and is going to become the dominant treatment strategy. And younger generations of surgeons need to train to become familiar and comfortable with these procedures and work together with interventional cardiologists in a true heart team setting. We see exciting innovations coming in, in, in the pipeline, not only in relation to the aortic valve, but also in relation to new mitral valve technologies and extending further to the tricuspid valve and consolidating the, the role of percutaneous intervention in the pulmonary position as well. There are numerous emerging technologies from Edwards and the other major uh, manufacturers currently with new self-expanding valves becoming available, for example, with designs to reduce the incidence of paravalve leakage, new devices that have less impact on the conduction system and reduce the requirement for permanent pacemakers, and also a much lower French uh, sheath size, which will have a major impact on the development of vascular complications. It's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting period of uh, growth and expansion. The future is looking very promising. The future is very exciting. Mm -hmm.